Today's lesson is done in standing, but you it's easily modified in a beautiful lesson also in sitting. Um, you'll need your shoes off. And if, you're, if you choose to sit, if you have a stool versus a armless chair, that would be the preference because you'll be reaching behind you a bit. So a sturdy armless chair, a stool or standing. One of the suggestions um, is that I note what is the preferred um, position for starting. And so that's why on the screen, modified, modified. So, okay, we're gonna get started. I think it's about time, few people still <laughs> logging in. Welcome to Body Moves. This lesson is titled Folding, Bending, and Standing Steady. Your shoes off and can be done in sitting and um, sturdy armless chair, the preferences in standing. So I'm Dottie Honors Foster, a Feldenkrais practitioner. And um, today's lesson encourages stability. We'll be discovering where that sturdy, stable standing leg is while you bend, while you lengthen, which means an alignment from your foot to the top of your head. So um, let's get a little technology details out of the way. If on your end, if it's intermittent, that's a bandwidth issue, you can stop our video coming in or you can stop your video going out. It frees up some bandwidth and you still get the audio. And my goal is to prompt you enough audio where you don't need the video. Um, you're all muted during the class and you don't need to take any notes because I have a reference sheet on my website, you're provided a link to that and also a survey and a video. So um, no need to take notes. So, okay. I am going to introduce to you Skinny Rick, our skeleton. Um, he is starting the lesson out, he'll be in the sitting position for this entire lesson. And actually he can't demonstrate much. Um, we will be sliding our hands down our legs in the direction of the floor. He doesn't bend to even do that very much because his spine is a little bit stiffer than our spine. What, he, what we will be doing is putting a toe out to the side here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in standing. And also a heel out. Um, so what I say, let's get started. Okay, so come to stand if that is comfortable for you. Sitting works well. I put Skinny Rick on a wobble stool because there's times where we're going to be reaching behind us. So we're going to start out just by sensing how we stand. Feet are a comfortable hip distance apart, a comfortable stance, and take your awareness to the sole of your right foot. Whether you're standing or seated, the sole of the right foot is in contact with the floor. Notice where most of the weight is in your foot. The ball, the heel, maybe an outside or an inside edge and compare that to the other foot. Notice the bend in your ankle between the top of your foot and the shin. 
and the bend in your knee from the back of your calf to the back of your hamstring. And where is your pelvis in relationship to your feet? Maybe it's forward with more weight in the ball of your feet, or maybe your weight is back and your pelvis a bit back. And where is your head in relationship to your pelvis? Maybe off to the one side side, maybe forward, maybe back. Just notice and begin to walk around. For those of you who are standing, walk around a bit. If you're choosing to sit this lesson, you can walk in your seat, transferring the weight from one side of your seat to the other. And notice how your sole of your foot rolls across the floor, the bend in your toes your ankle, when does your knees come forward as you propel yourself forward? Put your hands on the, your hips and notice the swagger in your walk. And you can put your hands also on the side of your ribs, get the sense of how much movement is happening in the ribs and where are you looking? Notice where your horizon is and then reach like there's something on the floor that you want to pick up. Just reach over there to get it. Notice what that feels like as you fold and bend at the beginning of the lesson. And do that on each side. Pick up a few things that might be on the floor or a lower coffee table or something like that. So when I reference um, your feet and your legs, if you're choosing to sit, you are the sole of your feet still in contact with the floor. Your legs are the same distance apart. Your feet and your legs transmit all the way up here to your sits bones. The, how you settle in to the chair. And that's why I oftentimes say a sturdy armless chair, not too much padding, so you can feel how your seat makes contact with the floor. So coming back to your stance, comfortable stance, feet flat on the floor, your hands just on dangling down towards your lap and slide your hands down the front of your thigh you tend to round your torso, looking in the direction of the floor, your knees, and ooze it back up. This is one of the comparisons that we're doing at the beginning of the lesson. Continue doing this while I go to gallery view and observe. So you're just sliding your hands down in the direction of your knees and you're in charge of ease and comfort. So you're only going as far as what is truly easy and comfortable. Okay, this lesson should be hard unless you're making it hard. And then come to a shake it out. We take a lot of rest, shaking, and, uh, shaking it out, changing up your stance so that um, you freshen up. So take your right hand and begin to crest the outside of your right leg. So you're taking it slow enough, you're bending a bit to the right. Your left hand can just dangle with gravity. If you're massaging the outside of your right leg and then unbending yourself and coming back up, inhaling and repeat this movement many times, folding and bending to the right, taking it slow enough so that you can truly caress the outside of your right leg.
Notice the direction that your head goes in relationship to your pelvis. You may find that you're looking down towards your right side. The pelvis wants to go in the opposite direction, over to the left. And the next time that you come back up to your comfortable stance, let's take our left hand and caress the outside of your left thigh. And notice how this side is different. Where do you feel it? Remember, you need to be in your range of ease and comfort. So you, our sides are not the same. And then let's alternate. As you come up through your center, then go down one side, let the head hang. The arm that is not caressing can do whatever it likes. And then oozing back up, breathing in as you come up through your center and caressing down the other leg, bending your knees, your ankles. Everything can participate in this caressing party. And when you feel that you have caressed the outside of your legs enough, let's take a break. Now, breaks in this lesson can be done lying on the floor, standing, walking around, giving yourself to the chair to take a break. Your choice. You are in charge of being comfortable and truly taking a walk, a rest, a break. So now for this next one, we are going to transfer about 80% of my weight to the left foot and the right toe is off at a diagonal. Here on the ball of the foot stays in contact with the floor, zooming in to show the position of my feet. And we are going to take our right hand and massage down the front of your right leg. Okay, so that means that you are bending both of your knees because you're in the ball of the foot there. And then massaging back up. Your left hand can do whatever it wants. It can dangle down here with gravity. You can stick it in your pocket. You can do whatever you need to do. So exhaling, notice how your head goes into the direction of your right knee, you're folding, you're bending. Most of your weight is back on that left foot. So you really need to find that point where you're steady. Lose yourself back up and inhale. And do that one more time, caressing down the front of your right leg. And back up. And then let's go to the other side. So transferring most of your weight to the right leg. The left toe comes out a bit in front of you at the diagonal. The heel is lifted, but the toe stays in contact with the floor. Then take your left hand and massage down the front of your left thigh. Your right hand can do whatever it wants. <laughs> And notice your range of ease and comfort on this side. So as your head goes down to the left 
on that diagonal, notice that your pelvis is going a bit to the right. Opposite your head. And one more time, massaging, caressing down the front of your left thigh. And now we're going to blend these two movements. So that left toe comes back, you stand on it, the right toe comes forward and caressing down the front of your left. And you take it at your pace, smoothing out the transition of your feet coming back. Right is standing, the left toe is in just there to support, to balance you. The left heel is off the floor, but the left toe, the left ball of the foot remains. How can you smooth this out as much as possible, making it luxurious? And when you're done with that, let's take a break. You can do whatever you like during the break. I, for me, I like to walk around, pace around, wiggle, shake it out. You can do that in your seat. Some people like to lie down and take a break. Okay, the next movement is going to be taking our right hand, putting it on the right back side like it's in your back pocket. And that back pocket goes all the way down your back of your leg. So it's an imaginary pocket. You're gonna slide your hand down the back of your leg. What is interesting is I can do that so many different ways. If my pelvis comes forward, then my hand wants to go down in the back. But I can also caress the back side by taking my pelvis back, my head forward. Skinny Rick can do it in a chair by simply going down the back side of his chair. He still has to figure out how in the world his hand is gonna go down the back side toward the chair legs or the stool legs. So come to a comfortable stance and your right hand is on your back side like it's in that back pocket and be Begin to caress your right buttocks, oozing down a bit, and then curling yourself back up. Your left hand can do whatever it wants. So notice how you choose to do go first. Are you taking your pelvis forward? so that you can reach down your thigh a little bit? Or are you taking your pelvis back and your head forward? What's interesting is that our body has this innate sense of how to balance. So whatever your pelvis does, your head wants to do the opposite. Allow that to happen. And then let's switch sides, taking your left hand down the back side, taking it slow enough, you're massaging, you're caressing the back side of you. In order to do this, your ankles are bending, your knees are bending, your whole torso is involved. And explore the difference of taking your pelvis back and your head forward. What is your favorite? What is your go-to? And let's 
pause, take a break, shake it out. Walk around, give yourself to the cheer. Okay, now we're going to come to a comfortable stance. We're going to blend these two movements. So your hands are behind your pelvis. And you're going to organize yourself to discover what works best for you as you take both hands down your backside, massaging the back side of your buttocks, down your thighs. Notice how you bend in the ankle, the knee. You're folding your spine, looking down toward the floor. And then you slowly, slowly come up to your comfortable stance. And then change it up, explore different ways, taking Explore, what if I take my pelvis forward, my head wants to go back? Maybe that's your go-to, maybe it's not. How do you organize yourself to fold and bend, noticing how the head goes opposite of your pelvis? And shake it out a bit and come to a wider stance so that you have a little bit more stability. We're going to continue that same movement, but we're going to transfer the weight to the balls of our foot and then the heel. And it's oh so such a small movement. The sole of my feet stay in contact with the floor. So it's just a very subtle shifting of your weight. So come back to both hands on your backside. You're in a wide stance and begin to crest down your backside and transfer your weight a bit into the ball of the feet but keeping your heels in contact with the floor. Looking down toward the floor, bending, folding, and then coming back up, keeping your weight in the ball of the feet. And then repeat that movement, taking your weight back into your heels. And notice just as you think about that, as you take your weight into your heels, how does that move your pelvis? Maybe you're taking your pelvis forward, lighter in the ball. Oh, maybe that doesn't work so well. You discover, you fool around with, what is the best way, how can you transfer your weight into the ball of your feet, and into the heels very easily, very gently. What accommodations, what changes do you need to make in the rounding and the folding and finding your stability to do this movement? And let's take a break, walk, rest, whatever you need to do. So our next position is going to be similar to what we just did with weight, most of the weight into your left leg, the right toe off to the side, 
but this time we're going to fold and bend a bit differently taking our right hand on the outside caressing the back of your leg your left hand crosses through the inside your middle line so both hands can be behind your leg okay and begin caressing the back of your leg your heel is lifted and ooze it back up so take it really slow finding the stability in your left foot that means you're bending at your ankle and your knees your pelvis goes back to the left as your head goes forward on the diagonal looking down to the right and oozing back up notice how far your heel is lifted off the floor just be curious there's no right there's no wrong and one more time caressing the back side of the right leg folding bending is there any part of you that's not happening to this folding and bending party invite it to come along and let's shake it out a bit before we transfer sides so you wiggle you shake so if you're choosing to sit your your um, left toe will just be off to the side like this your weight is in your right sit bone so come to your position standing or sitting your right hand crosses over your midline coming through the inside left hand on the back side both hands massaging caressing down the inside of the back side of your left leg lifting your left heel which forces you to really find the stability in your standing leg. So does this side feel any easier to you? Do you have a preference which side, which way you tend to bend? You can imagine yourself trying to pick something up down there on the floor. And when you feel ready, let's blend these two movements so that that left toe comes back. You stand steady on it. The right toe comes forward on the diagonal and you switch your hands to massage down the back side of your right leg. Is it easier to fold and bend going down to the right? That right heel is lifted. And go back and forth, smoothing it out, transferring your weight side to side. Don't interfere with the movement. Notice the shape of your back. So as you're looking down at the diagonal, your pelvis is opposite. As you come back through your center, your pelvis wants to sort of sway through the middle to switch sides. And let's take a break. Shake it out. So while you take a break, I'm going to share with you how I have used this lesson in my life. Especially when you're in a really small space. Um, we were traveling and we had this little teardrop toe behind. 
we had maybe two to four feet when the bed wasn't um, out. And oftentimes I wake up in the morning and be doing this caressing down my legs. And it was a beautiful way to activate my spine for the day. And the beauty of it is that it is surprisingly effective even in sitting. So, okay, coming back, your turn to join. We're going to start out in a wide stance. Transfer your weight to your right. Your left toe is um, in place. The right heel is up. And we're going to do the same movement we just did. Uh, our hands are pressing down the back side of that right leg. And we're going to alternate side to side. And arcing your pelvis through the middle, transferring your weight to the right foot. The left toe comes out, the right heel is up, that bends your leg, and you're caressing with both hands down the back side of your left leg, bending, looking down toward the floor, noticing the movement in your pelvis as you bring your weight through your center your pelvis arcs to the other side and then ooze yourself down the right leg, caressing hands going in the direction of the floor and your pelvis moving opposite your head. So as you are caressing down your left leg, we're looking in the direction of your left knee, your left foot, your pelvis needs to find its stability going out to the right on that diagonal opposite your head. How can you make this as smooth, as luxurious, inviting all of you to this caressing, folding, bending movement. Notice your breath. Notice how your spine folds. How you bend. And let's take a break. Shake it out. Wiggle it out. Do what you need to do to take a break. So our next step is very similar, but dynamically what it changes in our stability and in our hamstring is huge. My weight is going to be in the left foot, 80% of my weight, and my right heel is out on a diagonal. The toes are lifted, toes coming closer to the shin, Toes to the nose, some people say, okay? So now your turn, come to that position. If you're sitting, your leg is off and your heel is in contact with the floor, okay? And Massaging down the front of your thigh with your right hand, pressing down the front of the right thigh. Notice for some of you, the, your feet may be more available in this position or not. Feel free to tickle your toes, massage the sole of your foot and come back up, oozing up. And now slide your hand down the outside of your right leg, 
coming. And then when you get down there, then switch to come, bring your hand up the inside. So you're making this huge sort of U-shaped movement going, massaging down the outside of your right leg. It folds your torso differently. Your head look to the right, pelvis to the left. And then massaging back down the inside. You have to fold and bend a bit differently. Woo, shake it out. So that's definitely a, a different way of trying to find your steadiness in that standing leg. And so it's really asking your backside to work, lengthening your hamstring, folding your torso. So, Come to a wide stance. Let's do the other side. Weight in your right leg. The left heel is off in the front at a diagonal. The toes are up. And taking your left hand first down the front of your leg. Folding, bending. If there's anything in you, your muscular tension that's interfering, just ask it to let go. And then begin taking your left hand down the outside. Your right hand can just dangle with gravity. If your toes are available, tickle your toes. And then ooze and caress the inside of your left leg. And do this several times. Pressing down. Oh, and let's come to a stopping point. Takes a lot of effort and organization to find the stability in this very folding, bending position. So, our next move I'll demonstrate just, we're going to do almost the same thing, but we're gonna blend the two movements. So I'm gonna start out, we're gonna go down, making a U-shape down, our leg coming through your, and then switching feet and going down the inside and then back up the outside, okay? So, what we're gonna, the hands change a little bit. So let me talk you through this. Standing in your left foot, right heel off at the diagonal. Take your left hand, slide it down the outside of your right leg, caressing. And then when you get down there, bring it up the inside and then switching your feet so that the right is standing steady, the left heel is out, your right hand crosses over, massaging down the outside of your left leg, bending your right knee, and that right hand coming up the inside of your right leg, transferring your weight through your center and repeat that, taking the left hand down the outside of the right leg. Your right leg is the standing with most of your weight into the right foot. Your left, your 
excuse me, your right leg is straight, the right toes come closer to your nose. And one more time, caressing, bending. Notice how the pelvis is moving opposite of your head how your heel pivots on the floor. Hoo hoo. And let's take a break, shake it out, rest, whatever you need to do. Okay, our next movement is blending. Like with any awareness through movement lesson, we've been adding on layers. Now we're going to bring some of those layers together, alternating the position of our feet and our hands. Feel free to change it up. If you're standing and you're, oh, I'm gonna sit, you'd be fascinating how effective this lesson is in sit. So you're in charge of ease and comfort. So make the changes that you need to do. As we come towards the end of this lesson, we're going to transfer our weight into our left foot. Our right toe is out on the diagonal. We're gonna take our right hand, massage, press down our right leg. And then as you come back up, transfer, bring your toes up so that the right heel is in place and bring it up. So that right foot is alternating from being a little bit of support in the toes and a little bit of support in the heel. When do you find that it's easiest for your system to alternate. Your body is very clever. It can find what works well for your organization. Taking it slow enough. If your toes are available, feel free to massage your foot, your ankle, your calf, your knee. And let's switch sides. Standing on your right, and you're gonna alternate from your left toe being out to the left heel. Caressing down the front of your left leg with your left hand. Is there a position that is easier for you? Do you have a preference? Don't interfere. Notice the shape of your back, the bend in your legs. And when you're done with that, let's wiggle and shake it out. So the very last step of this lesson is combining several things that we have done. Our, you're going to choose your standing leg to start out on, and the other toe is going to be off the side. We're going to take both hands, caressing down the back side of our um, leg that is toe, and it's going to alternate toe to heel. Okay, so I'm going to put my Sturdy standing leg is my left. My right toe is in contact with the floor, the ball of the right foot, and both hands coming to the back side of my right leg, caressing down the back side of my right leg. And 
when you feel the time is right, transfer to the right heel, bringing the toes closer to your nose, taking it slow enough so that you can feel the adjustments that your system is making in order to accommodate this. So about 80% of your weight stays into that standing steady left leg, the knee, the ankle has to bend to accommodate this coming, changing for, on your left foot from the ball of your foot to the heel. That in itself is fascinating in the movement that happens with your whole body. And invite any but part of you that's not participating, let's switch legs, coming through your center, weight is in the right foot, the left foot is off on the diagonal, the heel, both hands lighting down the back side of your left leg. This is towards the tail end of this lesson. So if there, there's anything that you would like to do to fold, switching from your left toe to your left heel. Notice how your head goes down to the left, your pelvis to the right. And as you come up, take a wide stance and take both hands down the back side of you. And ooze it back up. And do it the other way. If you did your pelvis back, take your pelvis forward, sliding your hands down the back side. And then come to a fresh wide stance like we did at the beginning of the lesson. And we started this lesson taking both hands down the front of your thighs and just note how you fold and bend. Could you pick something off the floor a bit easier now? Roll yourself back up. Try that one more time, maybe at a diagonal. What, imagine a scenario in your day where you're reaching and bending whether it's vacuuming, picking things up off the floor. And come back to a normal stance and walk around if you're standing. Notice the roll across the sole of your feet, the bend in your ankle, how your knee comes forward with each step. Put your hands on your pelvis. Notice the swagger in your gait and the movement in your ribs. Notice where you're looking out. Well, I totally enjoyed sharing one of my most favorite lessons folding, bending, and standing steady. This lesson is offered again on Saturday, 9.30 Alaska time. The value of repeating is huge because there's a lot to think about with any of these lessons. So if you can repeat, you really begin to truly discover how you're moving. Um, as you repeat the lessons. And these lessons are brought to you totally free from the American Parkinson's Disease Association, the Northwest Chapter, and the Homer Council on the Arts. So November is the month of giving. 
So if you feel that it has been helpful, be heartful and consider a donation to either one of these organizations. Um, like I mentioned, the handout is, I've done the notes for you. I've also talked a lot about this book. It's up on your screen, The Brain's Way of Healing, a fabulous read that will give you a lot of insight onto how you move. Um, and my husband is going to bring up my website because I wanna share with you all of the resources that are there. So you can go to my website at Insightful Body Moves anytime. I have the last two week of handouts on there and almost a month word worth of audio lessons. And I'm going to be taking a look at the chat and seeing what um, there's any questions or any input. Um, I love to talk about this. So um, any thoughts or I'm curious, how did this lesson feel for you? Did you find it soothing, maybe challenging? So on your screen right now is my website. You can see the book title is there, just so you don't have to take those notes. And as he scrolls down, you come to today's lesson. It is right underneath the image of the book. And each one of those black boxes, there is a play button and you can listen to the audio recording of the lesson. So, and I have like a month's word um, of audios in last week's lesson, knowledgeable knees and flexible feet. And I try to keep this up to date. So one, um, it's just there for you because the value of repeating is huge. So 